Hey folks, Matt from RightOfTheImage.com. Got a question here on the email from Greg. Greg's writing in. He says, hello, Matt. I currently own the Nikon D7000 with the Nikon 18 to 300 millimeter, uh, 35 to 56 VR, the Tamron 20 to 20, uh, 10 to 24, and the Sigma 17 to 50 f2.8. So actually, just pause here for a second. Great lens lineup. You got, you got a fast f2.8 uh, constant aperture zoom. You got a nice wide, and you've got a great all-round lens, walk-around lens, that's super zoom. So that's a, that's a pretty good lineup. The next thing I was at, if you want my opinion, is the uh, 50 f1.8G. Uh, or, because if you're going to stay with one of the bodies that can handle a D, you could look at a less expensive, smaller, lighter f1.8D or an f1.4D. I really like my f1.4D. So he continues, I was wondering what would be the best upgrade camera from the D7000. Also would like to stay in DX format, so that's important. We're not looking at full frame here. I like to take pictures of landscapes, portraits, sports, low lighting, and cars. I'm thinking the D7100, 7200, or D7500 brackets. Only thing I don't like about the 7500 is it only has one memory card slot. But if it's a better camera, then I'll just have to deal with it. What do you think? The budget is $800 body only. Thank you, Greg. Well, thanks for your question, Greg. Interesting question and interesting parameters. Thanks for defining that, you know, you're not looking at full frame and nothing wrong with that. The DX cameras today perform amazing. Um, the the differences in these three, the 7100, the 7200, and the 7500, are um, is, there is some defined reasons why I would buy one over the other. If you're shooting a lot of low light and video, then the 7500 is your guy because the 7500 has the D500's sensor essentially in it. So it's a really good low light camera. Not that the 7100 and 7200 aren't, but it does have the edge. So if you're doing a lot of low light, the 7500 has the edge. It's got less resolution though at 20 megapixels versus 24. And also it does have 4K, which we don't have in the 7100 or the 7200. And that can be a huge advantage even if you're just extracting stills. But, you know, I'm a big fan of 4K. So if you're doing a lot of video um, or if you're shooting low light, 7500 is the way to go. If you're not particularly in low light a lot of the time, the 7100 and the 7200 both perform well in low light, just not quite as well as the 7500, but they have a little bit more resolution. They got four more megapixels. They're very good performing cameras, both of them very solid contenders, and I wouldn't have any problem with you buying either the 7100 or the 7200. The difference is we don't have 4K, and if video is not an option or not something you're interested in, that doesn't matter. They got pretty capable uh, 1080. Um, the 7100 and the 7200, what's the difference between the two? Basically just a faster sh or a deeper shot buffer. In other words, you can shoot faster with the 7200 than you can with the 7100. Essentially the same camera that was really only the difference. They have essentially the exact same image quality, the exact same sensor. Some people would argue the 7200 is a little better at uh, high ISO. I would say no in the real world. They're, they're just exactly identical as far as image quality and, and what you can get out of them for, for your pure image quality. So the only real reason to buy the 7200 over the 7100 and spend that little bit of extra money is the fact that the 7200 has a deeper shot buffer. Where is this going to impact you? Well, if you're shooting cars uh, or sports and you want to shoot at a higher frame rate, your camera's going to lock up faster. Your buffer's going to fill and you're going to have to wait for it to empty quicker on the 7100 than you would on the 72. And you do say you shoot cars and you shoot some sports. So that may be the reason to go to the 7200. However, the 7100 could be fast enough for you and you may want to save the little bit of extra money on the 7100. Uh, they're, at a, they, they're available at a really good price right now, especially in a refurb, and put some money in the lenses or flashes or other accessories that could potentially make your photography that much better than the extra money spent on the 7200. So those are why you might want to look at either of those cameras. They're all good options and, and, and how you would weight your decision. I'll throw it back to our viewers. What do you guys think? Do you agree with me on which camera you should buy and why? And how to make his decision? Is there something else you think he should consider in making his decision between the 71, the 72, and the 75? Um, let me know in the comments below. Do you want to make the argument for another camera? Do you think maybe the D500 is the way he should go? I think he's got a, a good selection. I would, from what he's said, I think you've got it narrowed down to three good choices. And I think you just need to decide how much low light and video you're shooting and then decide between the 71, the 72, and the 75 that way. And that will rule out or will either rule out the 7500 or rule out the 7172. If you rule out the 7500, then just make your mind up as far as is the frames per second and that deeper shot buffer an issue for you. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Let's hear what you would do and why. And uh, thanks for your question, Greg. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.